Hi, this is the second part in our covalent bonding uh, videos. So the learning objectives that we're looking at here are to use electronegativity values or the position of atoms in the periodic table to predict and explain the polarity of a covalent bond, as well as to indicate the polarity of a covalent bond using the appropriate convention. So here we have, um, we're looking at electronegativity. We talked about electronegativity in one of our previous videos. And as a reminder, it's a measure of the attractive power of an atom for the electrons. A scale can be used for this um, and to measure this, and it's called the Pauling scale. Some of the values are given um, on, in the table on the right hand side. And so we have um, hydrogen at 2.2 versus something like oxygen at 3.44. What that says is that oxygen has a greater electronegativity for the electrons in comparison to hydrogen. If you think about the position on the periodic table, I haven't shown the whole periodic table here, but if you think about the position, we know that the electronegativity on a periodic table increases as we move across. Um, and so you can actually use the position as well as this Pauling scale. Um, polar covalent bonds due to, occur due to the uneven sharing of the electrons. So in a covalent bond, we're sharing two or more electrons. Um, if those atoms that are sharing are identical, then the sharing will be even. If those two atoms that are sharing the electrons are not um, identical, then the sharing will become less equal. So what we find is the atom with the greater electronegativity attracts the bonding electron pairs towards itself a little more. The action results in the polarization of the electrons and so due to that the electric charge across the covalent bonding. So what we see here is the bonding that occurs between hydrogen and chlorine. They are both um, on different places of the periodic table. And hydrogen, if we have a look at the scale that I gave before, hydrogen has an electronegativity on the Pauling scale of 2.2, whereas chlorine has 3.16. That is significantly different. And so we can see that the chlorine will attract the electrons more than the hydrogen. What that does is it leaves a partial positive charge on the hydrogen, and it gives a partial negative charge on the chlorine. This is the notation that we're asking you to do, to give. So the one that has the greater attraction gets the negative, partial negative or delta negative, and the one with the less attraction gets a partial positive. Here we're looking at non-polar covalent bonds. So this is when we have the same electronegativity, so it's the same atom, or very, very similar. If that's the case, we class it as non-polar covalent bonds. So here we have an example of hydrogen. We have two hydrogens. They are both going to attract the electrons exactly the same way. And so you can see here from the diagram that there is no um, end that is heavier than the other. And so we end up with the electrons spending equal time around each nucleus. And so we end up with a bond that just looks like this, so H bonding to H. As you can see, there is no partial positives or partial negatives required. Also, we also need to look at properties of covalent molecular substances and covalent networks. Our covalent molecular substances will end up having low melting points and boiling points. The reason for that is that the molecules can separate from each other when a lower amount of energy is added to them, lower in comparison to metals or ionic compounds. Therefore, molecular compounds usually have low melting points and low boiling points. They do not conduct electricity in the solid or liquid state. There is an exception if they form ions in an aqueous solution, then that will occur. But in general terms, they are non-conductive because they do not have any free electrons or an overall electric charge. Covalent network substances um, have a continuous covalent bonding between all atoms and then they form the 3D lattice structure. So we've got some examples here, graphite, diamond and silica. Graphite, strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms um, in each layer and weaker, weaker forces holding the layers together. 
Here we have an example of diamond. Diamond and graphite are allotropes, so elements in the same state that have the same, have different structures. So here we can see the bonding occurring as well. We also have another example of a continuous covalent network, which is silica. Um, and so we have silicon represented here as blue and oxygen represented as red. And you can see the covalence between them. Now, these structures are very different to the molecular structures that we were looking at previously, and so therefore they have different properties. They have very high melting points and boiling points because of those strong covalent bonds between them. They have a relative large amount of energy required to melt or boil those structures, um, and so that's why we end up with these high melting points and boiling points. They are usually poor conductors of electricity because the electrons are not free to move as they are in metallic structures. They are not made up of ions. They are very hard and strong and will do not dissolve in solvents like water. The reason for this is due to the strength of the bonding in all directions of the structure. The bonding network is too strong to allow the atoms to become surrounded by solvent molecules. Well, that's part two in our covalent bonding series. Thank you.